What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video, join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Red Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Rikishi is ready to return for the bloodline, CM Punk's status for SummerSlam, is WWE letting superstars keep their names, Scott Steiner denies steroids, AEW ghosting Ric Flair and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Now, as always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good is number one, Dirty Doms in the Doghouse. The Dominic Mysterio Apology Tour kicked off last night and as fans expected and likely hoped, it was a miserable failure as Dirty Dom couldn't do anything right to convince Rhea Ripley his up and close personal approach to dealing with Liv Morgan was just a big misunderstanding. The various segments were handled superbly with the WWE paying tribute to the beloved romance storyline between Eddie Guerrero and China. At the same time, the WWE made the storyline its own with Rhea reminding Dom she belongs to no one but that she owns Mysterio. Number 2, Rhea Ripley Extended Cut Rhea Ripley was in a lot of segments last night, but she managed to pull all of them off well, a testament to her abilities as a performer and the WWE's creative department. Rhea has been gone for far too long, so it made sense for her to catch up with her Judgment Day teammates congratulating Priest on leading in her absence and congratulating Balor and McDonna for getting their tag titles back. However, Ripley critiqued some questionable choices such as Carlito's presence as well as Morgan getting chummy. Overall, this was an effective use of Ripley and while the WWE shouldn't use her this often every week, doing so this week was a smart choice. Number 3, Chad Gable teams up with the Kree Brothers. The long-awaited alliance between Chad Gable and the Kree Brothers finally came together as they tried to take out Bo Dallas only for the Wyatt Six to send Brutus and Julius running. This could have been the shortest alliance in WWE history. Number 4, excellent promo by Damian Priest. Damian Priest's promo with Gunther was arguably the World Heavyweight Champion's best as he rebuffed Gunther's insults and shows he's not backing down from him. While we suspect Gunther's title win is a foregone conclusion, Priest has built this confrontation well, especially since promos aren't Gunther's strong suit. Number 5, Drew McIntyre snaps again. Is Drew McIntyre determined to get himself suspended from WWE forever? McIntyre's relentless quest to get CM Punk has taken on Captain Insane on levels and it's fascinating to watch him obsess over getting Punk and ignoring everything else, including Raw General Manager Adam Pearce in his way. Number 6, Show Flowed. Last night's Raw featured some hit and miss matches, but the WWE did a fantastic job building each matchup with interviews and backstage segments. Last night's show was another well-paced one with segments seamlessly flowing through each other. Number 7, Sonya Deville has a 5 head. Selena Vegas' win-loss record isn't too good, but her confrontation with the new alliance of Sonya Deville, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark showed that she's the queen of one-liners as she brutalized all three women on the microphone, telling Deville she couldn't hear past her forehead. Vega was unfinished and she told the three she was not intimidated and that they could bring their forehead and moustache to the ring. Vega's always been a great talker which made her so effective as a manager and guest commentator and it showed last night. The only downside is it exposed how weak Deville and company are on the stick. But that was a good what about the bad is number one Sheamus vs Dunn is done. The WWE's fascination with a Sheamus vs Pete Dunn program is disturbing because it's difficult to imagine what the payoff will be for either man once this program finishes. The brawling brutes haven't been a thing for ages so why is Pete Dunn suddenly so worked up? The storyline is flimsy and WWE needs to figure out something better for both men. A death rebel, a death. It looks like the WWE just can't help but change its superstar's entrance music. Sheamus is the latest victim as fans wondered why the WWE changed the Celtic Warriors theme song again and why they replaced it with something that sounds best on mute. While the universe has applauded the company for its creative decisions, its continued butchering of entrance themes is mind-boggling. I was nothing downright ugly, Raw wasn't as good as the last few weeks, but truth be told, fans have been spoilt lately. What did you guys think of the red brand last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Our first story looks at CM Punk's status for SummerSlam. The top of today's news is an update from Dave Meltzer on whether CM Punk will wrestle Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. The match seems to be in jeopardy as Raw General Manager Adam Pearce hasn't lifted Drew's suspension. However, Meltzer is reporting, The last I heard about Punk, which would have been a week ago, I was told probable, so it's not 100% or it wasn't 100% a week ago. It could be that he's not cleared or it could be that this is the storyline that they're doing. Well, Dave is probably one of those, but you guys think that the Punk vs Drew match will actually happen? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Rikishi is ready to return for the Bloodline. 
I could fancy Rikishi into the Bloodline storyline. Rikishi has teased getting involved before, but some recent comments from the Hall of Famers suggested he wouldn't get involved as he's not ready for the grind of weekly television appearances. However, Rikishi now noted on his podcast, Will I be interested? Of course I would. Nonetheless, he also restated that he's not interested in returning to the road. If in case it comes to the point where I need to be on the road a lot, then I'm kinda not interested. If the WWE concocts some meaningful segments for Rikishi, it's possible he could return in some capacity as long as the WWE feels his presence will help move the storyline. It's easy to imagine Rikishi showing up to plead with his sons, increasing the drama, but as long as Rikishi's schedule is limited, they may feel that it's not worth bringing him in. Next up, Chelsea Green wants to reunite with Matt Cardona in WWE. A could real-life husband and wife Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green work together in the WWE? While both have worked in WWE, with Green currently tearing things up in the WWE, the wrestling gods have always seemed to keep them apart, with one working in the WWE and the other working elsewhere. However, Green is hopeful that that will change soon, as she spoke with Fightful commenting, I came back to WWE and he's on the independent scene absolutely crushing it. And we're back to figuring out a new dynamic, because we also never had this one. We never had Chelsea in WWE and Matt on the indies. So that's a new one as well. I just feel like our relationship has gone through the craziest ups and downs and we're just clinging on for dear life and figuring out as we go. But of course, our end goal is to be in WWE together and have an amazing storyline and do some mixed tag matches together. That would be amazing. Matt Cardona's success at reinventing himself since his WWE release has impressed fans who enjoyed his work as WWE superstar Zack Ryder and even got him over with new fans. A Cardona green team could be a fantastic addition to WWE. What do you guys think? Next up, is WWE letting superstars keep their name? Is the WWE letting its superstars keep their IP when they leave the company? A recent story seems to suggest this, but Fightful Select is reporting things aren't this cut and dry, noting wrestlers can continue using their real names when they leave the WWE. For people using their real names, there's no way to prevent the talent from using them outside the company. This is a reason why Warrior, Ryback, China, and Tess changed their legal names to their ring names in an effort to get around that. Fightful added that wrestlers who used stage names for many years before entering the WWE are protected, citing examples such as Roderick Strong, Samoa Joe, and Chris Jericho. On the other hand, wrestlers who adopt a new name in the WWE aren't protected. Raj Desi can't use Jinder Mahal, AJ Francis can't use Top Dollar and the like. Next up, details on Natalia's new deal. Natalia's re-upped with the WWE and according to Fightful, the deal was signed at the end of June and is for multiple years. No other particulars were revealed, but we'll continue monitoring the story. Next up, Scott Steiner denies steroids. A wrestling self-described genetic freak recently discussed steroid use on an episode of a and &E Biography Legends, revealing, You can make all the accusations you want. I never failed a drug test. Take that information and do what you want with it. When I made the transition from Steiner Brothers to Big Papa Pump, I wanted to get in the best shape I possibly could. A lot of strict diet. Once you're leaner, you're naturally going to look bigger. While some fans and Steiner's contemporaries may disagree, he seems ready to stand by his statement. And whilst he said that he never failed a drug test, what do you guys think? Is Scott Steiner telling the truth? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up is AEW ghosting Ric Flair. Is AEW ghosting Flair? Now, Flair, whose AEW return played a significant role in Sting's retirement, hasn't been seen in AEW since Sting's last match. Flair recently discussed his absence during an appearance on Busted Open Radio, revealing an idea he had for the finish to the Sting Darby Allen vs. Young Bucks bout. At the end, as Sting is standing there and those guys are gone, I jump on Sting, boom, boom, boom. He does one big move to me, puts the Scorpion Deathlock on me, and we go out of way we started 31 years ago. It would have blown the roof off the joint and it would have made me a heel, so I had somewhere to go. It's hard to get the people to get mad at me now. The Nature Boy added, I haven't heard back from them since. Rick, that's a great idea. We'll call you. We'll call you later on. However, some new sources are speculating Flair is done with AEW. The reason there have been no signs of the Woo Energy drink on AEW TV is Malta commented, I asked it was not told to me completely, but you can kind of read between the lines and the tea leaves and the sponsorship fell through. That's what happened. The Woo Energy thing fell apart. The sponsorship fell through. You may recall that AEW's reported multi-year deal with Flair was being financed by the money AEW received from the Woo Energy drink partnership. The partnership is over, Flair's AEW run may be over too. And finally, Jey Uso wants to link up with Rhea Ripley. And last but not least, is Jey Uso looking for a love from Rhea Ripley? Main event Jey Uso was definitely ready to mingle with the Eradicator when he learned that she might be single. Jey took things further after Raw went off the air, commenting on Raw exclusive, I mean they're both minds can side at the same time. But having a victory out there on Monday J Night Raw, it's a little different though. I don't know, what's going on with Morgan and Mysterio, I don't know if it's a love triangle going on. Main event Jay was just getting warmed up though. I think she deserves better. If she needs a shoulder to cry on, holler at your ooze. You know what I'm saying? 
We can take it slow, go to the Waffle House. You probably ain't never been to Waffle House though, but you need to come this way, Rhea. It's a little cheap, but it's good. The quality's good. She looked like she would eat 10 egg whites and a chicken. And I'm all about that triple hash brown life ooze, double waffle chocolate chip cookie ooze. We are gonna get along just fine though, Rhea. Jay clearly knows what he likes, whether it's ordering a Waffle House or looking to woo WWE superstars. Do you think Jay and Rhea would ever get into a romantic storyline on WWE TV? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.